How you guys doing tonight? I can't hear you guys. Let me hear you. How you guys doing tonight? My name is Ryan Perio. I'm a stand-up comic. I'm here to tell you if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you can always be a comic. Or you can perform in a Mexican restaurant where you'll never be able to dine because you can't afford it. How you guys doing? Like I, I, this is. I guess you can tell this is kind of a tight shirt. Um, and that is my weight loss plan. Hello. 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 Yeah. My thinking. Hello. Maybe if I make my fat uncomfortable, maybe Hello. it'll leave. Let's just be honest. This is not a strong physique. Like seriously, like ladies, how am I supposed to impress you with that? Like seriously, like like I was at a, I was at a country bar and I was playing that video game, which is a big punching bag that comes down. And I tried to punch it, and it punched me back in the face. And I don't know if the scoreboard on it said 101 or LOL. I don't. And I'm out of shape. Like, you never find out you're out of shape in a really great way. Like, you just always find out like an embarrassing way. And that was embarrassing for me, so I joined a gym. Yeah, and the first thing I did is I tried yoga. Yeah, and for those of you, I'm gonna step back here so y'all can see me. Um, for those of you that don't know how flexible I am, Kaboom. This is it. This is as far as I can bend over to touch my toes. I look so ridiculous in that yoga class. Mainly because they made me wear a helmet. I hate going to work out at the gym though, either. Oh, thank you. Yeah, much better. Awesome. Um, now you can really hear me. Um, but I go to the gym, and I don't want to go to the gym during the day anyways. I like to go at night. Like, when people aren't there, just look at me, because like, there's all kinds of things in the gym I don't like people to see. And I go, but I drink a lot, and you can't set a treadmill to stagger. But the worst part about joining the gym for me, hands down, was the free personal training session I received when I joined. Because personal trainers are terrible human beings. They are. Because they'll come up to and talk to you in their own little language that they expect you to know what they're talking about, but they don't explain any of it to you. Like, he comes up to me talking about rip, shred, tear. No, we're not. We're going to do a little thing I like to call try. Then, he said we, which meant me, was going to work out until failure. Yeah. I just look in the mirror. I was like, done. Um, since you guys are entrepreneurs, let me give you a little tip. Uh, if, you have, if you end up like having a large company, don't put your employees in cubicles. Please, don't put your employees, because that's my day job, is I work in a cubicle. And I feel like every company rubs it in my face that I work in a cubicle, because every email at the very bottom says, we respect your privacy. <laughs> no, you don't, there's nothing back here. Like, if you want to respect my privacy, stop writing me up every time you see me on monster.com looking for a new job. How about that? How about respect my privacy then? Like, my, co my job has like a bunch of posters and stuff, like motivational posters, like teamwork and stuff. You know, you don't need to put a poster on the wall to motivate me to work. You can just put my bills up on the wall, just all of them. You can just put them right there. I have a car payment that's three months behind. We can teamwork that. We can teamwork that instead of the iceberg. I, have a, I work in a cubicle and I have to decorate my cubicle. That's the worst part about working in a cubicle, you have to decorate it. And I basically decorated in my cubicle and it says, don't talk to me. That's the decor I was going for. Like I have the beta fish, little beta fish in the glass bowl. If you don't know anything about beta fish, you put more than, beta, more than one beta fish in a glass bowl together, they'll fight all the time. Same thing goes for if you put another person in your cubicle, go away. Like come, people come up and talk to you in a cubicle. They just come up and talk to you about meaningless stuff they do during the day, like things that are not even work-related. Like, I had a guy come to my cubicle and brag to me about solving a Rubik's Cube puzzle. Yeah, the toy from 1981. It's only taken him 33 years to solve it, but thank goodness I was there to share that moment. He was like, check it out, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm a problem solver. Look. Every single color is on its own separate side. So I went to HR, recorded him as a racist. <laughs> Working tech support, 
Um, and what I've realized by working in tech support is technology has like totally turned our society, like it's made the people that I used to fear as a child, like weak, like my mom. Okay, my mom used to be the most fearsome thing to me. My angry mother coming at me was terrifying, okay? That's a terrifying woman, okay? This same woman, you put a laptop computer in front of her with an hourglass on it, tears, just tears. She's like, Ryan, I clicked it, it's not moving, Ryan. Ryan, I clicked it. It's not moving. There's something wrong with this computer, Ryan Blake. It's still not moving. Do I need to click it again? I'm clicking it again. I'm clicking it. It's not moving. Ryan Blake, what's going on? I don't understand. This computer shouldn't be this slow. It shouldn't be this slow. This computer's brand new. This is a brand new computer we bought three years ago. It's still new. What's wrong, Ryan Blake? It's a virus, isn't it? There's a virus on your mother's computer, isn't there? There's a virus. You need to come look at this computer right now, Ryan Blake. There's a virus on my computer right now because there's a virus. I look. Someone's stealing your mother's identity, Ryan Blake. Someone's hacking your mother. Someone's hacking your mother. So what you're going to do when your mother's being hacked, Ryan Blake? You're going to sit there. You're going to sit there while your mother's being hacked. Someone's stealing your mother's identity, Ryan Blake. You're going to sit there. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do when your mother's identity is being stolen. My, mother's, your, my identity's gone. My identity's gone. It's gone. Just, thank you, Ryan Blake. You did nothing. You did nothing. My identity's been stolen. Congratulations. Now someone's charging my credit card right now to the max because you didn't care. I did everything for you, Ryan Blake. Everything. I may not have given you the best, but I gave you everything I could, and you just don't care. Mom, relax. First of all, Mom, you're $30,000 in debt. If someone's stealing your identity, they'll give it back. And hacking you for what? The recipes you post on Pinterest every day, the new recipe you post on Pinterest, the new one? Like, there's a hacker out there that, that's lonely, that's out there just hacking people for recipes. Like, what? Recipe for cheese souffle? Not anymore. Kids are technology even worse. Like, I get so angry at my nephew, because he has an iPhone. Like, when did kids, how cool is it to be a kid now with an iPhone? Like, he, he did this move to me that they do nowadays, these kids do with their cell phones when you're talking to them. In the middle of your conversation with them, out of nowhere, they just pull their cell phone out and just look at it. Just look at it and wait, and wait for you to stop talking. I felt like an old man. I felt like an old man, like I was gonna, ha I had a grandpa story with my nephew at that moment, at 38 years old. I was like, you lucky. You know what, when I was your age, <laughs> you know what I had to do when I didn't want to talk to an adult? Yeah, we didn't have fancy iPhones back in my day. You know what I had to do? I had to stare at the floor. Yeah, in the 90s, if you didn't want to talk to people, you had to do this. He has Angry Birds, Angry Birds, on a screen. I had, I guess, a dirty floor. It's not fair. Like I, like, I wish I had an iPhone. Like, I wish I could just ignore people with fun. That would be so great. Um, let's see here what else I want to talk about. Um, I'm big into sports, I am. My dad's not. And I feel like I could be an amazing athlete if my dad just actually was in the sports with me. Like, if my dad just supported me, like, I could be an amazing baseball player. Like, I could be the greatest baseball player ever. Because my dad liked HGTV. No. No, instead of sit out on right field, catch shagging fly balls and out there looking at the landscape, like, well, if we could put a stone patio back here, well, we could also put a bird bath. That'd be fantastic. Um, let's see here, I'm 37. Uh, anybody here try online dating? I'm not really good at it, because I don't know how to Photoshop. <laughs> like seriously, like I dated a girl for nine months on online dating. She was an entrepreneur. I'm kidding, she worked at a haunted house. I wish I was making that up. That, one, that one's true, she worked at a haunted house. That's what I had to explain to my parents, okay? This is my girlfriend, the person that works in a haunted house. Can I just say, after dating a girl for nine months that worked at a haunted house, haunted houses don't scare me. They really don't. Blood, guts, zombies, doesn't do, doesn't scare me at all. No, I'm a 37 year old man with no money and savings and no financial future. That's fear. You wanna see a real haunted house? Let's go to my one bedroom apartment. That's a real haunted house, all right? It's a gated community too. And what I've realized by living in a gated community is you know what kind of gated community you live in by the way your gate opens. Yeah, when you live in the really nice gated community up and like this, like, oh. 
when you live in the bad ones, they just up with their sides like welcome to prison and just pulls you aside. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I live in Mesquite. I actually work in Mesquite too. I had to walk to work one day because my car was broken because the payments went on on it. I had to walk to work. You know how embarrassing it is to have to walk your way to work? Like, this that close that you could actually, you know, make it on foot? Like, that's how I feel like I was like, oh, I could do so much better. Um, but uh, I live in Mesquite and I drink a lot. And when you drink a lot, there's nothing worse than driving home late at night, like at 2 in the morning. You know, I'm doing things I'm not used to, like staying one lane, drive the speed limit. I can't even do that sober. But at two in the morning, just to taunt you, you'll have a cop car in the far right-hand lane going one mile below the speed limit. And the whole time you're coming up on, you gotta take the next exit. Take it. Okay? You're not taking that exit, are you kidding me? All right? All right, so the next exit's a quarter mile away. We can take that one. All right, you're not taking that one here. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's Mesquite, Texas. Are you kidding me? I see crud. I see crud. So yeah, you've been that slow, extremely awkward pass. Just... What do you do for that 10 minutes you're together? Does anyone just give up? Anybody just give up and just wait with the cop? Just See, I don't do that, I like to play games. I got a game called DUI Chicken. Yeah, what I do, I get right alongside the cop car, make eye contact with the cop, and then I do a field sobriety test right there behind the wheel of my car, just while it's going. Just... So now I have a DUI on my record. All right. Do a couple more that I'm gonna hear, guys. Um, um, I recently hit rock bottom. I had to buy a shirt at Walmart. Not this one. Um, I don't know if any of you had the pleasure of buying clothes at Walmart, but Walmart doesn't make you feel better about the fact you're buying clothes at Walmart. Yeah. I don't know if you know what their clothing label is. I'm gonna tell you, it's called Faded Glory. Thank you, Walmart. Like, I didn't know my glory had faded. Not only that, they size things differently at Walmart. Like, the S inside the shirt didn't stand for small. The S stood for slim. What the heck is slim? And more importantly, what is it doing at Walmart? You obviously don't shop at your own store. But then I kept thinking about it. Maybe that's how Walmart sizes the shirts. Like, they size the shirt by the chance of the shirt actually fitting you. So, S, slim. There's a slim chance that this shirt is going to fit you. Put it back. What about M? Maybe. Maybe if you went to the gym once in a while, this shirt would fit you. L, last chance. Last chance to leave here with a little dignity. Nope, XL, extremely likely. Welcome to the club. When I go to places like Walmart or Kroger, any place that has a self-checkout, oh, I use it. Yeah, because I can handle a stupid computer way better than I can handle a stupid person. And self-checkout is stupid. It's the only computer that can't do math. Like in my head, behind that machine is a little number two pencil and some scratch paper. It's just doing the math problem with you. And when it can't figure it out, it just errors out and embarrasses you. Like in my head, behind that screen, it's just doing this. Boop, $1.75. Oh, okay, $1.75. Boop, $2.50. Okay, $1.75 is $2.50. Okay, it's five plus zero. Boop, hold on a second, please. Just give me a second. Hold on a second. Boop, control your kid. All right, control your kid. It's in a play thing. Boop, you know what? Unknown item in the backing area. Please remove this item. Not that one. No, a 10 has been notified. Last thing, guys, is I've been watching the news recently, and uh, I noticed on the news they've been talking about America being in debt. And they're saying America is so far in debt that they could actually default on some of their loans. Is there nothing more American than that? To be the country hiding from other countries' bill collectors, just be that country with, hello? It's China. Hola, this is Mexico. You guys, it's been a pleasure, you guys. You ready to have a good time? I can't hear you. Are you ready to have a good time? Let's bring Nick back up here, ladies and gentlemen.